Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing my top six tips for painting realistic animals faster. All right, you ready to go? Let's start. Do you dream of painting realistic wildlife, but you just, you don't know where to begin? Then consider this your personal invitation into the Wildlife Painting Academy. Get access to a large library of real-time, in-depth tutorials, and learn how to paint your favorite animals easily. Check it out in the link of the description of this video. So tip number one is to use larger brushes. Now there's a couple of reasons why I recommend using larger brushes, especially when you want to start getting better at painting realistic wildlife. And the first reason behind that is because it actually allows you to paint faster. You're covering larger portions of your canvas at one time. And the other thing is that it actually prevents you from jumping into details too early. Jumping into details too early can make it really hard to build up a solid foundation for your artwork. And you're gonna find that you're gonna struggle a lot more later on in their painting. Plus, if you start with details too soon, you might have to cover them up and nobody likes to waste time doing work that they're gonna have to redo anyways. The second tip for painting realistic wildlife is to do an underpainting. Now, this can be one of two ways. And if you are been watching my channel for a while, you'll probably see me do both. But one of them is to use a colored ground, as I call it. And basically what this is, is just you are doing a dilute wash of color over your white surface, so paper or canvas or whatever you're painting on, to get rid of that white. So basically, Usually what I end up doing is I take brown acrylic paint because it dries really quickly, thin it out with some water, and I paint my entire surface with that. Sometimes I use other colors too if I wanna go for a different sort of mood in the painting. But what this does is it allows you to actually establish your lights and your darks much easier. If you are painting directly onto a white surface, you're gonna end up having some contrast issues if you're not careful. So starting off with an underpainting is a really, really good tip. Another way you can do it is to flesh out some shadows and highlights into that underpainting. So taking it a couple steps further, and then once you're all done that underpainting, then you can actually jump in with your details and all the rest of the fun parts of the painting. Basically, an underpainting gives you sort of a map to work from. And a map is there to make your life easier, so I highly recommend you giving it a try. So my third tip that I wanna share with you is to use a different medium. So remember here, we wanna learn how to paint faster. You can't, you can't ignore the fact that there's some mediums that just work quicker than others. For instance, I'm an oil painter and oil paints take a long time to dry, as in sometimes days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months. Yeah, months. And if you are waiting months or weeks to get that next layer on your painting done, that adds a lot of time. So what you could do is use other mediums. If you are an oil painter like me, you can use mediums that actually cause that oil paint to dry quicker. You can do an underpainting with acrylics and acrylics dry very quickly. And what's great about them is that you can build oils on top. So try these different things, or you can change mediums altogether. You can try acrylics, you can try watercolors, you can try pastel. Pastel has no drying time. So that's a really good option if you want to get a lot quicker with your artwork. My fourth tip for painting realistic wildlife faster is to paint the same thing over and over and over again. I know, not super fun, but this method is super effective. And the reason why is because, let's be real here, animals are tricky to paint. They're tricky subjects, they all look different, they're tricky. So they do have a steep learning curve, but the more you paint something, the faster you're gonna get. You're gonna learn what that animal looks like. You're gonna learn the structure. You're gonna learn little shortcuts and tips and tricks and just ways to speed up your life. But you gotta paint that over and over again. So practice on something you love. If you love painting wolves, then try doing a series of 10 to 20 wolf paintings. You're gonna find by the end of them, you are a lot faster. My fifth 
tip for painting realistic wildlife faster is to get a little loose with it. Well, let's explore what this actually means. So one of the ways that you can work looser is by working with those larger brushes that we talked about in our first tip. Working with those larger brushes prevents you from doing detailed areas too quickly and it kind of forces you to work a little more loosely. You can build up bigger color swatches at a time. You can get some really cool textures in there and get some really cool structure. And ultimately, because you're working with a larger brush, especially if you are painting a smaller area, it's gonna be kind of clumsy. And this sounds bad initially, but when you're working on getting faster, this actually helps a lot because it helps you to realize that there's certain foundational levels that you can build first with those larger brushes, but also you don't have to fully tightly detail every little thing. By working more loosely, you can come to realize where detail is more important. So I used to be guilty of spending hours working on it, tiny little spots on my paintings, packing it so tight with detail that frankly nobody would notice other than me. And it just, it felt like a huge waste of time. It didn't add to the painting. It just, it was a time suck. So what I ended up doing is I had a friend challenge me um, to basically complete a painting in one hour. And I laughed and I said, I can't do that. My paintings take way too long. Detail takes forever. You know the story. But I'm not usually one to back down from a challenge. So I sat down and I set a timer on my phone and I got all my supplies ready, got my reference photo ready, and I tried completing a painting in one hour. And you know what? <laughs> not gonna lie it was one of the best things I ever did for my artwork and the reason why is because it totally shook me out of that structure that I had built around my painting style where I needed to have all of that detail perfected it had to be so detailed so perfect and because I was so focused on that I wasn't really enjoying the art anymore and that's a huge shame and it makes you question why you're doing it whatsoever so Forcing myself to complete a whole painting in one hour really taught me to get loose with it. And it was one of the best things I ever did for my art. So if you wanna try doing that, set a timer. Set a timer for an hour, then do another painting of the same subject. Set it for half an hour. Try another one where you're doing it in 10 minutes or 15 minutes or five minutes. But test yourself and see how far you can push it. And you're gonna learn a lot, I promise. All right, so my sixth tip for painting realistic wildlife faster is to pay attention where your detail actually needs to be. So here's the thing, too much detail can actually overwhelm the eye. And as a result, the viewer of your artwork, their mind gets confused about what they're supposed to look at. And it creates a very noisy, stressful, <laughs> anxiety inducing uh, piece of artwork to look at. And that's not usually what we wanna try and achieve with our artwork. So by placing detail in very specific areas, it actually allows the eye to flow through the painting in the way that you want it to without overwhelming the viewer, which is a great, great thing. So as an example of this, think of your traditional Where's Waldo picture. The entire thing is packed full of detail and there's a reason why it's really hard to find Waldo. You're supposed to find him, but it's really hard because there is so much detail everywhere. So we don't wanna do that with our paintings. Another thing to consider here is that details usually take a lot of time. And if you can avoid having to tightly detail your entire painting, because having a tightly detailed painting over the entire thing, we kind of talked about how it's not always the greatest thing, but if you're only detailing certain areas, you're gonna save so much time. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully you found those six tips really, really helpful. If you love seeing content like this, please subscribe. And if there's certain things that you wanna learn, let me know, leave a comment down in the description of this video. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.